hospitality India at an inflection point and it couldn't have come in at a better opportunity or time than post pandemic what we call the C19 now um, <clears throat> well although I've been away from active industry duties and responsibilities in the organization as I like the Taj but over the last six years I've been pretty much active um, so that uh, I stay re relevant uh, to an audience like this, to, to the younger generation. In India, it's actually for us, people like us, you know, seniors, senior citizens, it's a huge challenge, like how it is in, uh, how it was in certain other geographies. Today, we are the youngest country in the world. Uh, we have the demographic dividend. So that's obviously giving a whole lot of us, uh, you know, a bit of a complex. And um, so I have always been, I have always believed that uh, age is just a number but in terms of actually relevance you really need to be always think very futuristic um, <clears throat> and this is the best opportunity for all of you I can see almost what 80 to 90 percent of you right in the prime stage of your life so um, that influx point you know inflection point right uh, would you be able to take that leap you know leap of faith what does it take for all of you as general managers? Because I think except one or two here, um, almost all of you, I think, are uh, heading profit centers, right? General managers of hotels. And some of you are uh, cluster managers, regional managers. But then that's only just today. I always had this favorite formula that in your career span of about 30 to 40 years, you would actually be uh, staying as a GM probably for the first 10 years or 15 years. But the rest of your life, you know 20 years you'd be at the top but are you are you really learning something each day of your general managership to take on those positions as COO uh, you know or uh, regional president and things like that where you actually have nothing to do with the daily operations of a hotel it's got everything to do with uh, <clears throat> strategic outlook uh, talking about everything other than just this F&B and rooms and accommodation you know how do you run the company so that's where I think you need to really engage yourself uh, in today's uh, topic that I'm talking about. But before this, I just want to say that um, how many of you really believe that you can be the change maker, even as a general manager of the hotel? Can you just put up your hands? Okay, good. At least four or five of you believe. Because there is a certain, uh, you know, in the Indian hierarchy, in the kind, in the way in which the hospitality industries, um, including the Taj, the Obrois, or the ITC, or except maybe the multinationals, most of them are hierarchy-driven, right? Even today, I mean, it's not easy to get out of that um, <clears throat> whole mindset or organizational structure. However much we tried at the Taj, like I was the last person, I was the, you know, in fact, uh, Vinod knows that I was not even prepared to go to Bomb uh, back to Bombay head office when I was. They called me over from this beautiful property called the Western Hotel. I, you know, I was in love with that place and I was so happy as the area director and general more than any years at GM of that hotel because that's where the life is, right? But the point is actually when you go back into that, uh, re, uh, you know, Pan-India kind of responsibility on a brand and things, you have a very different perspective. Yeah, so that, that, that actually is what um, the future is all about. So I'll start with um, um, what is going to ha what is happening today, and you are in the right place at the right time, India, and especially in the urban spaces. Forty percent of India's most educated, top end, middle class, uh, and maybe upper middle class, all of them, whoever is um, college educated, graduates, as they say in the U.S., they're all migrating to the urban spaces. So. In that sense, 40% of a billion plus is a lot of people, right? Aspirational. So, uh, and they are all under 30, 40, millennials. So, they are going to actually expect a lot more difference than what currently is, including this hotel. Uh, because you have a historic legacy of a whole lot of, uh, there are more than 30 lakh rooms in India. Now, it probably could be another five lakhs. And out of that, only 10% is branded. Are you aware of that? Only 10% of that 150 to 200,000 hotels rooms are branded spaces. So is that an opportunity or is it a curse? What would you say? 
it's a tremendous opportunity because the other uh, 20 lakhs or 25 lakhs rooms are run by independent family run hotels and they all aspiring to migrate to branded spaces generational shift in mindset career shifts now on an avenue to growth in, in this is what i th- you know talent talent is today the uh, the main uh, main challenge uh, you know virtually you, re- you know today we are facing what we call the moment of truth it's long coming it's been coming for the last 20 30 years and i have been myself guilty of that being having been a general manager or vice president or whatever it is you know taking uh, people for granted uh, and i always had this you know generations like us used to always boast about saying oh i work for 18 hours a day uh, i didn't take a holiday uh, or sunday holiday for first five years of my career and uh, you know all lot of things and these were all considered to be um, you know, great points in those uh, in those in, in my era but that's very different now because today there is a reality facing us that it's all suddenly come we cannot kind of actually westernize or europeanize or globalize without taking all the the entire thing on us right we can't say that we are modern we'll make the asset very modern contemporary but we our practices and philosophy and concepts and belief system would remain the same the one thing that actually would be would be uh, would uh, uh, the one force the one resource that will hit back at you is the human resource nobody else can hit back at you you know uh, the interior design of the hotel is the human resource that is going to come back at you and say listen it's about time that the industry changes so i don't know how how long will it take how far will it take but today you have a very peculiar situations where you have most almost all the hotels are actually having excess of demand but operations become a huge challenge so as a result one could see that a lot of compromises on uh, service standards deliverables and even the experiences and customer satisfaction things that you know we're all struggling for it right so where who who's going to change who's going to wink first are those people who are sitting at home migrant laborers who want to come back uh, as your skills skill staff or you have to change that's what probably we see at the end of the thing the reality is that we have to change your ceos your mds of the companies your owners investors everyone have to change and probably you could be the catalyst you know don't think that you are at a level where you have not an influence maker you are not in the power of circle of influence it's all about how you decide one day to stand up and do a presentation and tell them exactly what the reality is and that what i would urge all of you to do be the change maker be the person in that company of especially of today in that could be a that could be a benefit of whatever i have done in, in this 15 minutes of presentation i hope i'll be able to keep up the time uh, but you have to take back something and say okay i'm going to be the advocacy i will do the advocacy i'm going to do this for my own company it's about time you tell the truth and the truth is that uh, <clears throat> work life balance we all have know about work life balance even i heard of back work life balance and uh, Uh, and the one last person I would like to ask this question was, did I practice? That is my wife, because then she'll tell you that 15 years of my married life was away from home, with two daughters growing up at home, and uh, so and I did not feel guilty about it, right? But because my career was uh, growing and um, I, there's a price that you have to pay. But today, my daughter is not at all willing to pay the price. He says, you know, I, India is developed. almost for her india is as good as the us if she is an affluent person which fortunately she has let's say a, a, a middle class or an upper middle class she has a house she has a car she has everything so what she doesn't have and she's looking for is work life balance you know you need to have some time quality time for myself when i can back home so therefore that is actually the aspiration for every single young person in this country the regardless of who they are they could be a m- migrant labor from uh from one of the northeastern states or anywhere anywhere in this country but he is actually also has a mobile he is access to the whole world he may not be able to do it but he has this aspiration he is seeing the entire world and how he is understanding the fact that he is he is receiving that communication that there can be 
some time for myself. I can actually also have a quality life if I do something. Right? So their aspiration is driving them to search for something that's more comfortable. That's why a whole lot of them have not come back. They said, I would rather be at home and do some little bit of agriculture because that's quality of life for me. Rather than struggling in some uh, ramshackle uh, you know, hut here in Bangalore and start, you know, I, uh, by the way, last six days I, I was the jury of Hotel Association of Bangalore. They're on an annual awards function. I went to all the restaurants and hotels here. At the, you know, the, <clears throat> I'll tell you, the, the working conditions of the kitchens is just horrible. You know, the way they, the cram, it's limited space, and the way they work, I was actually appalled. So these are all, and unfortunately, we, we do have regulatory measures, systems in our industry, but 80% of us do not uh, really comply with it because that's the way the systems are. But the people are going to change. If the government does not change, your staff, your employees are going to turn around and tell me, sorry, this is not the place for me to work. So uh, this is now a reality. Next is work culture, self-directed tasks. So here again, no more supervision required. They all are going to be self-directed groups. They don't want, so they're saying that, uh, you know, let's flatten the organization. But after flattening the organization, if you take out your managerial staff and supervisors, where does that money go? Hey, hello, give me. Don't try to take it into your profit, right? I will be the room boy, but I'll be the team leader and I'll deliver, turn around the rooms within the specific time. Today, the technology helps a whole lot of boys. You know, they have just a mobile um, <clears throat> a device with a little camera. And actually, they, they, they go by time-bound uh, cleaning uh, processes in a room without any supervision. It's all basically tech-driven performance parameters. You know, so the, the system is watching you and the system actually regulates his performance. So therefore, what happens is it drives quality. When he himself, when a human being himself is driven to take on responsibility himself, that's the most powerful thing. When he's do it, when he or she is doing it on her own, uh, you know, a uh, self, uh, self-driven uh, motivation. Pay for performance is going to be the next one. Flexi pay with minimum. They don't mind. I just also want to say, um, so that I don't forget it. You know, how about the general managers looking at contract jobs? How's Mr. Puni Chatwal is actually a uh, five-year MD. I mean, I was if I was the MD of the Taj, I would have gone, you know, 40 years of my uh, going growing up. Okay, next I will be the MD of Indian Hotels Company, and I'm a regular employee. But today, and that's how it is in Europe and America. But is why is it limited only to the MD of a hospitality company? How about GMs? You know, foreign GMs, and they come here, they're all enough contract, right? five-year contract. What happens is in that there's a huge flexibility in terms of your terms and conditions, how you learn, how what you give, and then you can move on to another brand, you know. So those kind of professions that, that's going to come down to even the uh, middle level management, supervisory levels, maybe not at the stewards level. I'm not talking this fixed team contract stuff. I'm talking about <clears throat> pay for performance, right? Because there is you know, it's, it's, a, it's a given reality that all of them don't perform at the same level. So how is that the, the best room boy or best steward or the best chef, Kami or uh, <clears throat> anyone in the front office, you know, if they perform excessively well and they do the same job in a higher quality and they also are able to uh, take on a couple of uh, boys' work, then they have to be paid well. It cannot be driven by the HR policy, you know? Oh, no, 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 it's all the same. So how operations head of a hotel takes charge. He or she has to be given the power in terms of how do you, executive power in terms of decisions. It's not necessarily driven by policies and regulations. Policies and regulations also have a shelf life, you know, but unfortunately it, don't, it doesn't change. It's not at all conducive to facing the reality, the dynamism that's happening in the, in the, in the business world, right? So how dynamic is your, you, are, are you, to absorb and take on decisions and quickly get in this uh, flexi pay. I mean myself split loyalty that everyone knows. Tech savvy, thrive on automation, life is fast paced, multitask and multifunctional. These are your, your clients, correct? So are you ready for that? You know, especially the legacy hotels, not necessarily just the new. There are thousands of new rooms are being built. You know, a couple of hundred 
uh, corner suites into uh, as we speak today uh, uh, tackling with some blueprint of a new hotel but they have they got all these things incorporated that's that's a reality don't wait for regulations unfortunately in this country uh, regulations and uh, implementation enforcements all that come in much later you know we always have, look at your classification question it's about 50 years old right if you go by that you'll be a redundant hotel correct so tech savvy thrive on anticipated service and predictive outcomes we are talking about predictive analysis today the highest job highest paid job that's available uh, right in Madis, uh, manhattan in new york city is predictive analysis qualitative analysis trans you know data analysis uh, you know how how can you actually translate all the data that's coming in into what we call doable decidable action uh, 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 you know actionable information right so that they can do it so that's where they are <clears throat> do we have anticipated what is it that uh, tomorrow a guest is going to check into this hotel and um, can you recognize that person and can you know straight as he walks in he or she and address the person by name and uh, before he goes in you know the the <clears throat> like for example he wants to have a uh, trouser pressed uh, would the boy go automatically and collect the things instead of asking any questions because time poor people don't have the time so if you have anticipation about customization of guests your conversation is limited to action sir i'm here to take collect your trouser oh how do they know that but he expects that today lifestyle renaissance smart casuals yeah so again i see that all of us are wearing the same thing i mean i'm okay uh, suit boot <laughs> i've written suit boot no yeah uh, no no uh, offense meant to, uh, because this, this is a very famous slogan now but that's that's what the uh, hotel managers are why suit boot why can't we have seasonal uh, grooms groomings uh, for the gm sorts so you can't expect only uh, and i can see here in this uh, hotel it's a vivanta that a uh, whole lot of people are wearing nice beautiful printed shirts open jacket right but they are all captains or managers the gm is in suit because he is mandated to be in suit so, uh, so how do you how do you then become a role model how do you become a role model for a millennial guy who comes in and works in this place or any place for that matter right um, lifestyle um, linear organization structure see it, it has to be your, your mindset has to change you know uh, lesser people at the top you have you know even today we are struggling a lot of companies are struggling with how do you actually flatten the anyone who is not a hardcore operations person who is not in guest contact uh, levels right who are more into strategic thinking uh, regional control command and control systems all that is now have to be demolished right i would have been proud, i mean i'm one of the persons who uh, have unlearning these things you know your your corporate office your regional office have to be minimum what you really need is champion gardeners champion bell boys you need you know super guys at the reception at the lobby level or some smart bartender you have to have invest on those kind of people and that, because that's where it it's all matters the rest of it is all taken care of by automation assistants right you need only few people to think it's a chronic shift automation you know uh, in the hotel industry we are of course as uh, the famous uh, uh, ceo of the marriott um, mentioned that we are not a hospitality company we are a technology company so true i think today the automation would be at up to a person is about 50 to 60 almost there right yeah so you should whereas uh, i was trained in uh, saila hotels in zermatt in switzerland before i opened this hotel because we, i was we, i was a luxury hotel gm uh, and then uh, they wanted to uh, you know unwind all the things and make me learn what is how do you run economy hotels mid market hotels so i was there in saila hotels and uh, there you know this was already um, happening for a 45 room uh, for a yeah, 100 room hotels they had about 30 staff so you know the whole systems is happening in the 80s and 90s there because they don't have staff right so in the millennium today at least we must this is the opportunity for us to plan and create massive capital investments into technology that's what i want to say you know are you planning 
now we have another three four months or four five months before you come in for the next year's fiscal budget capital budget you have to do research and find out do a mapping of your entire hotel and see what are the critical uh, migration of both technology uh, uh, in terms of hardware and software that needs to be put into mind this thing see uh, the change has to happen from at the hotel level the migration is a major pain point it's going to be a huge challenge you have to actually have a drop a master plan for each of the hotels how do you actually make up bring about these changes the work culture change and whole lot of changes so uh, for example untouched by human you know how many of the areas uh, in a, a hotel are today contactless or you know as he said uh, uh, easy access you know uh, seamless access so and in hotels in india are all highly fnb intensive highly banquet intensive now right so how are you going to actually bring uh, migrate to those kind of levels where it's going to be completely untouched what if the law comes in tomorrow there's a regulatory law that comes in and says that you know any guest contact uh, areas have to be untouched by humans in terms of the product or service that you deliver right so are we waiting for regulations to come is the question cost optimize the power of control technology also brings in huge amount of span of control for you right i don't have to elaborate on that but technology is power in terms of especially a complex business complex operations like the hotel doing it for 24 by 7 365 days you can actually even do it from your home actually many times right so you uh, the point question is who does uh, the investment is now done by the owner the investor right uh not necessarily the brand and the independent family and run owners also are not yet reached that level because they can see india uh, so many people are unemployed so many people are there we can always hire them out hire and fire them but they don't realize that earth is moving out from their feet it's it's all not going to happen there could be lot of people but do you get a carpenter from you can you manage to get a carpenter at the first attempt no a plumber no so it's not the board the people it's about skills right and the willingness to work <clears throat> next is uh, millennials of course thrive on technology they only understand technology some of you have children of 10 years and uh, nine, they already savvy they not they don't know where a bank is do you know these kids don't know where a bank is for bank is the mobile system right they 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 don't know uh, what is bill payment right so that that's the kind of regime so when you are already living in that at home uh, both the spouses and the children how is it that your workplace do not uh, you know bring about these kind of changes energy dependent energy is going to be the biggest resource uh, crunch for you right how are you going to actually manage um the new source of energy efficiency and unobtrusiveness versus personal service so this is a big battle in india you know because we uh, all the guests expect personalized service but over a period of time i can see that in the last 5 years um uh, the taj itself is changing i can talk for that uh, that's only brand that i know and i've lived all my life in taj so uh, and it's always known for personalized service customized service i mean there is you know we used to be when i came into the taj first time as a trainee i was told there is no such thing as a no in our dictionary and i heard this thousands of times with all my seniors right but today i think i think there are there's a nice balance between a no and a yes with between the you know even for customers right so there is this tilt towards efficiency and unobtrusiveness rather than personal service so the millennials are not much concerned about um, you know fussing over them they want to be left alone they want efficiency like exactly like how it's in europe or, or the us they want to shift it to efficiency this i would rather have i you know it's not about uh, saying um, you know sorry and and uh, uh, and giving them discount they are expect because they are time poor they, they have zero tolerance for inefficiencies they come in here and they want every systems to work yeah trend what is the trend Uh, minimalistic so even in design it there is going to be minimalistic design you know uh, you can contemporary design so you see again i am uh, giving the examples of oberoi's or the taj or the new hotels that are coming up in the in in, in india uh, madis of course is there all the multinationals are all very similar looking isn't it correct you can walk into a vivanta or walk into an oberoi or a madit and the, the designs are more or less same it's contemporary minimalistic lines 
right? It is never like this. Uh, if this was a Taj Hotel 20 years ago, there would have been lots of woodwork and this and that, right? So uh, that is the trend all across. Why is this trend? What is the design architecture's influence of trends? It depends on maintenance part. How do you sustain it? How do you maintain it? There is nobody to maintain it. Like there are no chandeliers, right? So uh, that's happening in India too. Labor is getting very expensive. Uh, as people become more literate in education, naturally they expect their aspirations are more. So we are also moving into that kind of a society where we don't get fooled by this thing about 1 billion people and things like that. No. Unfortunately, it's only 300 million or 400 that are actually driving this new economy in this country. The rest of them are unfortunately not uh, anywhere near that uh, center stage. <clears throat> so we are dealing with that 300 million people. Exact more or less the same uh, population as the US. Smart casuals, leveling off and hierarchy, level playing field, knowledge skill gaining currency, global climate concerns. Of course, uh, the more we talk about, the, the more we actually get uh, into our system and our mindset that that's, it's already here. Correct? The EV movement, I call it. Automobile industry today is a lot of the CEOs are grappling across the whole world. When do I stop production? No more designs are coming in on the, on the fossil fuel, as you all know. No more. No more fuel, uh, new designs are coming as far as the cars, automobiles are concerned, passenger uh, cars. Same thing is going to happen for the hotel industry, right? So the EV movement is already here. Plastic, paper, free, recycled linen, green energy, zero carbon emissions. They're all, uh, you have to ask yourself these questions today. Make a checklist, do a honest, Ruthless checklist and say, how many of these things are, you know, uh, uh, currently I am in, you know, uh, happening in my hotel, and what therefore what is the scope? You know, how about me getting, a, you know, drawing up a plan and submitting to my people, right? You could be the first person, maybe after attending this uh, particular <laughs> afternoon. Uh, you know, I just want to start, uh, trigger off the thinking per thing in you, uh, design centric. Everything is going to be design centric. Do you know per square foot, <clears throat> what is the rental thing for per square foot here in this, in the heart of town? This could be about 200, 200, 250 per square foot or more, right? That's only the rent. I'm not talking the investment. If that's the case, you know how much of uh, heart of the house, back of the house is there in every hotel? Almost about 50%, which is non-revenue producing, unproductive non-revenue. That's all going to go whole lot of things like do you know what's happening in almost all the restaurants in in Bangalore including Nagarjuna I went there for uh, for evaluation they have 3,000 square foot space double of about 400 people sitting dining but they have only just about 500 square feet for kitchen the rest thousand is already in some mother kitchen somewhere in the in a lower cost area and they're transporting to hubs like hub and spoke model they're not so production facilities shifting from all the restaurants in Bangalore. They're much quicker than probably hotels are or the upmarket restaurants are. Correct? It's now going to be per square foot revenue. What is your per square foot revenue? Camilla Punjabi used to ask me this question when I came in here in 1988. And I didn't know I, I mean, okay, yeah, fine. But you know, you ask me the question, but you are the top leader. You should introduce this in Taj, then I, we will learn. But he said that moment that's the future. It's going to be real estate. How are you going to recover per square foot revenue, right? So therefore, we need to bring in that consciousness that what we're doing today to what we have to do, there is a gap. Uh, next is conventional construction materials versus this thing. Everybody knows about that. Modular smart buildings are coming up. There are already lots of factories. There are a lot of there are many hotels that are coming up. Goa, new airport in Goa. They're building some uh, hotels and facilities. It's all modular. So it's all factory made and they're transporting it. And within about a month's time, you can have uh, G plus five floors. Um, Internet of things and let BMS, yeah, building management systems. So, you know, uh, maybe five years down the line, 10 years down the line, Suresh is not here, I think. Uh, they would expect this hotel, which is about, 98 rooms to be run by about 50 people max 50 i started off with 100 people i think yeah 100 to 100 yeah i had that luxury but 
10 years later so that's why because rest of it the company will invest especially professional companies international multinational companies and professionally run companies i have will have no other option but to massively invest in technology uh, 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 and especially uh, you know what we call replicable rep um, replaceable technology manual manual functions replicable replaceable manual functions like kitchen sorting right i mean today uh, there will be hardly anyone coming to clean the dishes and remove the food from the thing and all that it's so it's going to be manually done therefore what happens is the 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 automation machine does not require sick leave grandfathers don't die for a couple of times and uh, you know there no leave that's the way they think it so we might as well invest in that and get smart people to work for uh, smarter jobs that kitchen stewarding uh, stew you know for example in the taj i had a chap called gaikwad his father was a uh, uh, kitchen steward he became a head waiter and his son today is a sous chef at the taj so there is a generational progress and growth that's happening your domestic workers for instance you see that's your benchmark nobody wants any none of those women and my wife is actually very involved with working with the domestic workers of karnataka nobody wants them to have the children come back to any such work they all want the children to be educated you know there's one single most powerful aspiration for any poor person in this country is to educate the child so that which means what like in kerala there nobody to climb the coconut tree so once in a while one mangi comes and drops one coconut and they're very happy with that that's yeah in thailand they actually employ trained monkeys to pluck the coconuts right so the world is changing world is changing you may think there are 7 billion people on the planet but 7 billion people are having the same aspirations as all of us where we want to do minimum and get maximum design as a way of life yeah a uh, hospitality design designer layouts everything is going to be designed every single thing whatever you wearing today is design led whatever your your table your linen is design led your bottle water is design led so uh, are we bringing in design as a centric theme as a as a tool to design everything that happens in your hotel it's not just the hardware product but also about the service design and also for the process design You know, uh, there is a Tata company called Tata Alexi. You heard of that? Tata Alexi is a global company on design, right? So you know what it did in uh, Taj Mahal, Mumbai. Um, Taj Mahal, Mumbai. After the terrorist attack, we did a whole lot of things and brought back. And we discovered at that time there was national treasure of antique, antiques and new, you know, whole lot of things, heritage stuff. So then we decided that okay, this is a this is like a museum. how are actually organizing a museum walk a art walk in the taj mahal mumbai and they started that and we got a tall young handsome guy who was was in paris you know indian came down and we taught him everything and he became the art connoisseur or director and walked along took this guests across the whole uh, to across the whole hotel you know explaining about the art walk then they realized that suddenly after a month or so he got a good job and he went off and then there's no continuity so tata alexi came in designed the whole process illustrated book so in, in the challenge given to them was if i have a rip, if i have to replace someone else how fast that person can pick up and be billable become an art walk in two days exactly 24 hours so that's what the power of design is all about the future uh, kaleidoscope says crisis recovery is not linear which is true automation is the new standard so benchmark just when you get up from this hall and go home say that this is going to be my benchmark and map your hotel what is the kind of technology i have hardware and software uh, ai and uh, chat box are here to stay like uh, nikhil already talked about whole lot of things that his uh, and the, the multinational companies are already coming with this powerful tools of technology and systems next is contactless technology tech implementation strategies is a key for success right yeah because you need to actually migrate that 
into uh, people and it has to become billable, actionable, operationable. New channels of communication. What are the new channels of communication? Like you can talk to somebody next door on a WhatsApp, right? So today WhatsApp groups are the means of communication. Doesn't mean that the town hall meeting is become old fashioned. No, I'm not at all advocating that some of the best things about manual operation is will re remain in India. Yeah, one of them that I love is the town hall operation. Town hall where you can actually meet all the staff or what we call the mukha muki, face to face, talking to individual employees. Uh, leverage the pre-stay phase to boost everyone. Yeah. When in doubt, ask your guests. Very powerful, right? When <laughs> when you want to see that they are, you want to make some improvement or you want to know about yourself, you just have a conversation with guests. Get into these focus groups. Identify groups. Don't just keep asking people random. Because all of them are not trained enough to be good feedback customers. They say that you also have to educate the guests to play their role. There is this famous book called Co-Creating with the Customer. I don't know how you have read that by Mr. Prela and Krishna Swami, famous professors from Michigan University that talks about how you can, you know, subtly get, design the customer to play the role. For example, room service is a huge headache in India, right? So if you actually make the guest fill up the dinner knob, have a door knob for dinner, Make him fill it up before you go home in the morning. By the time he comes the evening, the dinner is ready at 7. Otherwise, what happens? The time that he spends on a whole lot of till he orders something, it's about an hour. And he expects the fish and chips to come in 5 minutes because he doesn't realize it. So, educating the role of the customer, like the simple thing. You study the label of a medicine bottle. It says for maximum effect, follow. Don't try to put... If you, somebody, the doctors asked you to make the, have the pill after the food and you have it empty stomach, then it's you know, not going to happen to you, right? So that's exactly it is. When in doubt, reputation always matters. Guest experience remains at the heart of our thought. Thank you so much. But yeah, for me, hospitality is passion. It's life. So, you know, I'm, I've become unstoppable. So thank you.